Glenn Bo Schembechler, 13th year at Michigan. His mark right there. Of course, Bo always had to live with the stigma of losing the last game of the season so often. Michigan would go to a bowl game and end the season on a sour note. And finally, he was able to erase that stigma. Last year, as the Wolverines closed with a flourish, went on to beat Washington in the Rose Bowl and hopeful of a repeat visit. Now, Earl Bruce, who took Ohio State to the Rose Bowl two years back, then last year, of course, it boiled down to the Michigan-Ohio State game. He came up a loser. His mark there through nearly three full seasons at Ohio State, the man who succeeded Woody Hayes in 1979. Michigan has won the toss. Wolverines to receive. That's Bob Atha, who is Schleister's backup at quarterback. Does the place kicking for OSU, and we're underway. Anthony Carter coming out of the end zone to the 10, 15. Carter may break it. 30, 40, and Anthony brought down at the 50-yard line. The All-American wide receiver. It's Cedric Anderson and Bob Atha who kicked off, finally catching up with him. Mr. Excitement, Anthony Carter. Here is one of the great all-purpose players in Big Ten history, Anthony Carter, number one, doing one of the many things that he does that makes him Mr. Excitement. Great on return, career receiving le leader, on the verge of becoming that. And also fifth, dangerous on reverses. 52-yard run back for Carter. First down. Michigan at the Ohio State 48-yard line. They operate out of the eye. Wolfolk is the tailback, and that's Edwards, the fullback, for a gain of one to the 47. The sophomore quarterback who's really come into his own in the last four games. Stan Edwards, durable fullback, and Butch Wolfolk who leads the Big Ten in rushing. There's Carter, the man who ran the kickback. He'll be all over the field today. The other wide out is number 27, Vince Bean. Second down, nine, at the 47-yard line. They send Bean to the right and split Carter to the left. Edwards, the fullback. Wolfolk, the tailback in the eye. play fake Smith setting up good protection but the throw incomplete intended for Carter Doug Hill covering up front William Bubba Parrish is the left tackle Stephen Humphreys 240 pound sophomore Tom Dixon in the middle at 236 Kurt Becker is outstanding an Outland Trophy finalist and the right tackle also outstanding Ed Moransky it's a terrific front line Norm Betts the tight end right now Jerry DiOrio is in there at a guard spot in place of Stephen Humphrey on third down and nine from the 47. Smith, good protection over the middle to Craig Dunaway, the other tight end, who gets close to a first down. We'll see where they mark it. At about the 39-yard line, Marcus Merrick made the stop, and we'll have a measurement. Well, just inside the 39. A look at the leading tackler on the team. Well, Penn State is known as linebacker U, but Ohio State also has quite a tradition of linebackers, and here is the latest in that tradition. And you can probably tell by the roar over the replay, first down for Michigan. Up front, Ohio State with Foster, Miller, and Ream. Then you've got Griggs and DeAndrea outside as the linebackers, Cobb and Merrick inside, and a very young, inexperienced, and porous secondary. Teams have been passing with tremendous success against the Buckeyes this season. First down, Michigan at the Ohio State 38-yard line. On the option, Smith, who has excellent speed, a flag is thrown as Smith gets to the 34-yard line. Glenn Cobb, the linebacker, number 35 making the tackle, and a marker down. First penalty of the game. Referee is Tom Quinn, and it's holding against the Wolverines. Steve Smith running the option play that time, and as you pointed out, Al, he has excellent speed. In fact, for the first 20 yards, they say that he might be the fastest man on the team. He runs a 20-yard dash in 2.6. He runs the 40 in 4.5, so he really can be a threat on the option play. Bo Schembechler was extremely high on Smith. He was highly recruited, and last year as a freshman, he didn't see a great deal of action. Well, there was a fellow named Wangler there. 
John played most of the season, did a fine job, but Bo knew that it would be Smith who would be his man this year, and Shem Beckler stayed with Smith, despite the fact that Steve had a lot of problems earlier in the season, and it's paid off, as we pointed out graphically in the pregame show, what he's done over the past four games. Penalty moving it back to the 47-yard line. First down and 18. Tom again looks for Bean. A flag goes down as Bean makes the catch anyway at the 28-yard line. It was Sean Gale coming over the top, and the interference call on Gale, but that's moved right now because he caught it anyway. Once again, play action fake. Fakes to the tailback. Bean, the wide receiver on the left, is running a curl in route. Now the coverage by Gale is good. The interference is obvious. He makes the catch. They're going to decline the penalty, I would assume, and that will get Michigan another key first down. What they'll do is they'll take the play if it nets more than the first down itself. That's the question right here. They're going to measure at the moment. Bring the change in on the interference call at the 28-yard line. If they take the penalty, of course, it's the automatic first down. They did. They told me I could take I'm sorry. I'll check it. They told me I could Okay. And they picked up the first down anyway. Penalty declined. So far, pretty much what Bo Schembechler told us during the pregame show, the right balance between running and passing. He said he would not let the weather affect his team. Actually, yesterday it looked like we might be in for a really rough time weather-wise. It snowed last night. I mentioned before the field was covered, however. They took the tarp off today, and the artificial surface is in good shape. Relatively dry. Had a few flurries this morning, so there's a slight bit of glaze on the turf. First down, lifting into the 28-yard line. Give it to Woolfolk. Butch takes it to the 25. Gain of close to three, second and seven. The career rushing leader for Michigan. Earlier this year, he surpassed Rob Lytle. And they have had some good runners through the years. I think a lot of the pro scouts right now feel that Butch Wolfett could possibly be the first running back chosen in next year's pro draft. His figures for the season, averaging 5.7 per carry. Second down, call it seven at the 25-yard line. Protected well again, and intercepted at the five-yard line by Doug Hill. The pass of floater, Norm Betts, was the intended receiver. Good coverage, and the pass just hung. And so Ohio State takes over deep in its own territory. Play action fake. It looks like a mix-up momentarily. Good protection. He's aiming for Betts, the tight end. And here is Gale, number 27, with perfect timing, stepping in front of Betts, who was running a sideline and up route from his tight end position that Doug Hill, his third interception of the year. Doug Hill giving the Buckeyes possession just outside their own five-yard line. First down, Ohio State. Art Sleister, the quarterback. Tim Spencer and Vaughn Broadnex aligning now in the eye of the running back. Spencer is the tailback. He gets the ball, spins away from one man, and then gets out to the eight-yard line. You've got Sleister Closing out a terrific career. Juan Brodnax, the burly fullback, weighs 252. Spencer and Jimmy Gale both see a lot of action at tailback. Cedric Anderson had that great day against Purdue three weeks ago. Gary Williams, the Buckeyes' all-time leading receiver on the other side. Second down, seven from the eight-yard line, and Jimmy Gale is in the game. Spelling Spencer a tailback, and Schleister goes to the air for the first time, and incomplete, throwing it out of bounds at the 25-yard line, intended for Gary Williams, number 44. Up front, Bill Roberts at left tackle, 258 pounds. Zelensky weighs 248. Jim DeLeon, the man in the middle, but he's been injured of late. We might see a lot of Joe Dooley there. Lukens is outstanding at right guard. Joe Smith, 256, a junior from Cincinnati. And the tight end, the second leading receiver on the team, John Frank who has caught 35 passes this season. Third down, seven 
from the eight, and Spencer is back in at tailback. So they've alternated Spencer and Gale on the first three plays. Sleister for his second pass over the middle and incomplete for a hard pass through the hands of Cedric Anderson. Rifled it. Mark Sleister coming right out throwing the football despite the fact that he's deep in his own territory. Cedric Anderson, the second leading receiver on the team at his flanker position, is running a deep hook pattern. Now the ball was catchable, but it would have been a very good catch had he made it. That ball should have been thrown more at his chest. Sleister under a little bit of pressure. Carl Edwards, who took over the punting chores only last week. He'd been bothered to that point by a hamstring injury. He kicked three times in last week's game against Northwestern and averaged 42 yards per catch. To boot it out of the end zone with Carter standing back at the 50-yard line as a single safety. Michigan trying to set up the return. The kick is end over end. And from the 47, it's Carter inside the 40. And Carter to the 29-yard line. Gary Williams making the stop. So Michigan in good shape with the Buckeye 29, 11.28 to go in the first quarter. No score, Dan Arbor. We'll open your eyes. If you have been extra good, get something extra for Christmas at RCA's Takeaway 2 sale. Just buy any 1982 color track console and get this black and white portable free. Then keep them both. Or give one to someone else who's been extra good. But see your participating dealer by December 24th, because we all know what that is. The end of the sale. RCA. For some time now, General Motors has been talking with people who know cars. I'm Bemis Ralphs, president of National Car Rental. And last year, we bought more than 50,000 cars and trucks. Most of them American and nearly 75% GM. What about average GM buyers? When they replace their GM car bought new with another new car, 70% buy GM again. In the U.S., no other major car company, foreign or domestic, comes close. See your GM dealer today. Tomorrow, the crisis in the NBA. Can it survive? and former NFL All-Pro Carl Eller's battle against alcohol and drug addiction on ABC Sports Beat tomorrow. The Michigan Wolverines with the ball at the Ohio State 29-yard line. For late tuners in, again, just to briefly sum up the Big Ten race, if Michigan wins today, that's it. They win the Big Ten championship, go to the Rose Bowl. If Ohio State wins today, they then must await the outcome of the game between Michigan State and Iowa being played at Iowa City. That game will start in about an hour and a half, and what Ohio State would need is a Michigan State victory. If Iowa were to win, then the Hawkeyes would go. First down, Wolverines at the 29. On the option, Smith down the line, tries to turn the corner and gets buried at the 28-yard line. Anthony Griggs turning him in, number 48, the outside linebacker. Anthony Griggs made the tackle. There is another one of the good men on Ohio State's defense, and they have uh, some very active, swarming tacklers. The linebackers particularly seem to make most of the tackles for the Bucks. Ohio State has been very good, as you can see, against the run this season. But Not good against the pass. Exactly. And That's the problem. Interestingly enough, these two teams are last and next to last in passing defense. Smith to the air. Got Carter at the 15-yard line. Anthony found an opening in the middle. Garcia Lane makes the tackle first down at the 15-yard line. Same action in the backfield for Steve Smith. He fakes to the tailback on the blaster isolation play. Anthony Carter from his left wide receiver spot is running the curl-in route, and the ball is thrown exactly at the numbers. Did you see where he caught that pass? Right on his number one. One of the great all-purpose players in Big Ten history, and he's only a junior. Carter has now caught a pass in 19 consecutive games. First down, Michigan at the Buckeye 15. No score, early first quarter. First man through the fullback, Edwards, getting to the seven-yard line. Ed Moransky and Tom Dixon up front help clear the path. Awesome offensive line for the Wolves. What are they, about 270 across? Strong, fast. Open some big holes. And they do a great job in pass protection. Smith's had a lot of time thus far. Each time he's dropped back. Second down and a short two at the seven. 
with Dunaway in motion. They give it to Wolfolk. And Butch takes it just about to the five, close to a first down. Marcus Merrick in on the stop for the Buckeyes. By Marcus Merrick and Anthony Gray. Be very close to a first down. Perhaps calling for a measurement, but no. As they look over toward the sidelines and you look at Earl Bruce, the indication is that Michigan is about six inches shy. Marcus Merrick has 128 tackles on the year. He had 140 last season. He and Cobb, a great tandem as the inside linebackers. Third down, inches from the six. Dunaway in motion. They give it to Edwards, and he dives over for the first down. Stanley Edwards, who has gained just 385 yards this season coming into today's game, but a man who picks up valuable yardage, as was the case there, on third and fourth and short. Mostly a lead blocker for the tailback, but he has had, as Al just told you, 385 yards on the season. He has been a tailback himself at times, and the good one. That's called north and south running. And a first and goal for Michigan. Inside the five, 8.34 to go, first period. Again, to give it to Edwards. He bowls ahead to the three, Len Cobb. Inside linebacker, number 35, in on the stop. Glenn Cobb, 98 tackles on the year. If you say Cobb or Merrick, you're usually right. It seemed to be in on most of the defensive plays. Michigan, ninth in the country in scoring average. Second down and goal. Double tight end setup. intended for Edwards is incomplete. Garcia Lane covering in the corner. A man they don't often go to trying to cross Ohio State up by faking and then going back to the fullback, but incomplete as Lane covers. That's a good call down in there, though. I like the rollout pass with a little pickoff action. Now watch Edwards coming out of the backfield. You'll see that the tight end comes across. There's the rollout, and watch number 32. Now, he is open momentarily, and had that ball thrown with a little softer touch, we would have had a Michigan touchdown. A little high and a little hard, and it's third down and goal from the three. Only to the two goes Edwards. So, Shem Beckler with his first decision of the day. As Edwards goes straight ahead, and it's Nick Miller and Glenn Cobb converging for the tackle. So the ball is spotted at the two-yard line. Fourth down and goal, and they will opt for three. At least seemingly, as Ali Haji Sheik comes in. Haji Sheik has not had a particularly good year as far as field goals are concerned. Only three out of eight, though he's not missed an extra point. The longest of his three field goals this season, 42 yards. This one to be spotted at the nine. Straight in front of the goalpost, 19-yard attempt to try to put Michigan ahead, and the kick is good. So Carter sets up the drive with a punt run back, 6.59 to go in the period. Michigan on the board, 3-0 Wolverines. Six minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Michigan Wolverines trying to go to the Rose Bowl. On top, 3-0. Ali Haji Sheik to kick off. Langley fielding from the five. Victor up to the 10 and slips down at the 17-yard line. The Buckeyes with their second offensive possession. As they spot it at the 18-yard line. First down. Those of you watching the Louisville Southern Mississippi game, we welcome you to Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the Wolverines are leading 3-0, and as soon as the technical problems are worked out, we will return those of you watching the Louisville Southern Mississippi game to that contest. Meanwhile, here in Ann Arbor, Arch Schleister, the Ohio State quarterback, leaves the Buckeyes on first and 10 from the 18-yard line, and it's Tim Spencer. Stop shy of the line of scrimmage. Number 50, Paul Geargash, the linebacker for Michigan, making the stop. 
Another great linebacker. Linebackers make most of the tackles. Both of these defenses. The teams have a lot of similarities, really. 3-4 look to their defenses. I formation look to their offense. Very quarterback and tailback oriented, and they both have outstanding wide receivers. And as usual, battling for the Big Ten Championship. Flag is down as Schleister throws over the middle, and Cedric Anderson can't hold on. Out at the 32-yard line with a marker dropped back at the 18. Referee Tom Quinn. Illegal motion is the call against the Buckeyes. From Arch Schleister's viewpoint, you see the fake of the sprint draw in the backfield. The protection is there. Now Cedric Anderson, the wide receiver, is running a curl-in route right there. He hit him right on the numbers, but he couldn't hold on to the football. Closing out a great career. He's had a remarkable career, one of the, the truly great quarterbacks in Big Ten history. And yet look at the problems he has had against Michigan. Five interceptions in the three prior games, only one touchdown pass. Penalty is declined after the incompletion. Third down, 10 from the 17. Gale, the tailback, the fake to Gale. Schleister setting up, has time. Right side complete out to the tight end, Frank who gets dropped at the 27-yard line. We'll see where they spot it, and from this vantage point, it looks like they will be shy of the first down by about a yard. Tony Jackson and Jerry Burgay converge to make the stop. You called it right. They are shy of the first down. Put it down at the 27-yard line, and it'll be fourth and one, and they'll have to kick it away. Anthony Cardner to drop back deep for the Wolverines. There he is. Ran the opening kickoff back 52 yards. Good punt run back. Setting up the drive that culminated in the field goal. Carl Edwards. His last punt fielded by Carter. Traveled 40 yards. Edwards with the wind at his back. Carter at the 25-yard line. Looking for some room. Coming back the other way. The 30 and dumped at the 34-yard line. The Wolverines taken over there with five minutes and six seconds to go in the opening quarter. 3-0 Michigan. The Michigan Wolverines on top. 3-0 and they have the ball at their own 35-yard line. First and 10 with five minutes and six seconds to play in the first quarter at Ann Arbor, Michigan. Temperature about 33 degrees at game time as Edwards, the fullback, takes it out to the 39-yard line. Stan, a senior from nearby Detroit, Marcus Merrick, in on the tackle, and Edwards momentarily slow in getting up, but he's fine. Second down at five. Edwards has carried the ball six times. Picked up 17 yards. to Wolfolk. Into some traffic. And ahead out to the 43-yard line goes Butch. It'll be third down and about two. Chris Reed, number 93, making the stop for the Buckeyes. That's one of the bread and butter plays in the I formation. And Butch Wolfolk, who you saw just then, I think he's going to be one of the top players chosen in the pro draft. He's 6'2", 210 pounds, and he, he has sprinter speed. When you talk to the pro scouts, there's little doubt. He may not get as much publicity as some of the other tailbacks in the country, including the man you're going to see in the second half of the doubleheader, Marcus Allen. Yep. And he's fast, durable, and done the job for Schembechler here. Third down and two. Smith keeping. First down. Gets to midfield. Stopped to the 50 by Glenn Cobb. Steve Smith, you can... See it graphically, of course, in the comparison between the first six games and the last four. I think what happens with somebody like Smith, Lee, and you're a former quarterback. You're a little tentative at first. You need some game experience, and all of a sudden it just seems to come, the poise with the experience. Confidence plays such a role in that quarterback position, and you gain that only through experience. That has come in the second half of the season. And despite struggling early in the year, Schembechler stayed with him, and it's paid off. First down from the 50. Side. 
for a gain of seven. Jerome Foster made the stop, and Ed Moransky made the gain possible with a fine block. Jerome Foster made the stop. There's a variation of the old crossbuck or misdirection series. It'll be second down. Call it two after a gain of eight from Los Angeles. The Trojans and the Bruins coming up next, plus Washington, Washington State. We'll keep you fully abreast of what's happening there. Next weekend, Friday, Notre Dame against Miami. And then the doubleheader on Saturday, Penn State Pitt. And the Bear tries to pass Stag as Alabama takes on Auburn. Second down, two from the 43. Inside the 40 for the first down, wrestles his way forward to the 36-yard line. Garcia Lane and Anthony Griggs converge for the tackle. This is basic Bo Schembechler football. This is exactly the type of style he likes. Ball control football, get the ball to the tailback, tackle to tackle running, and then mix in some play action, high percentage passes. Textbook game plan so far for Bo. Schembechler's team getting better and better this season, as was the case last year when they started out a staggering one and two and rolled on to the Rose Bowl. First down, Michigan at the 35-yard line. Wolfolk again, this time only a yard. Getting to the 34-yard line, Anthony Griggs, a senior out of Willingboro, New Jersey, number 48 right there, making the stop. Actually, Griggs will tell you, if you talk to him, he comes from the planet Funk. Planet Funk? The planet Funk. Funk. Love and understanding are the oh. keynotes on the planet Funk. All right. He's serious about it, too. <laughs> I thought he was a transfer from Villanova. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, well. Both. <laughs> Is Villanova near this other place? I think so. <laughs> Second down <laughs> at nine from the 34-yard line. by Marcus Merrick off the tip and Merrick is dropped at the 18 yard line Kelvin Bell deflected it and Merrick makes the interception and the Buckeyes have picked off a pair now well you've heard of the old tip drill that's run in practice from time to time now Steve Smith throws this ball a little late because his receiver is open momentarily down the middle here's the tip by Bell and here is Marcus Merrick, the great linebacker for Ohio State, the leading tackler on the team, and now adds an interception. Now from Merrick's viewpoint, you see what a linebacker has to do? He has to look, play the run first. Now he's chasing, and the ball is tipped right into his hands. That's a fortunate tip. So the Buckeyes from the 18 with a minute five to go in the quarter. Spencer straight ahead, getting out to the 21-yard line. Paul Geargash and Winfred Carraway, Carraway number 63, making the stop as Wolfo keeps warm. It's that kind of day. Mm -hmm. Brought your mittens too, didn't you? Absolutely. There was a thermos. Trem tremendous run on thermals in the Ann Arbor area <laughs> last night. Time of possession, all Wolverines to this point. Second down, seven. Schleister. Over the middle, man open at the 37-yard line. It's Cedric Anderson for the first down to the 38. Keith Bostick, number 13, the safety, making the tackle. Cedric Anderson, the flanker, number 22, had 24 catches coming into today's game. Now, here's his deep curl in route. Actually, it's a deep hook. And there is a well-delivered pass by Arch Schleister, who had a little play action first. Good time. Delivered right on target. Buckeyes with their best field position of the quarter. Their own 38. Only nine seconds to play in the period and the clock running. On first down. Give it to Spencer and a big hole through the middle as he gets to midfield. First down at the 50. Bach is momentarily stopped with just one second remaining in the quarter. It will start up again in a moment, so that will do it for the first quarter. They start the clock. And there's your last tick. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Al Michaels with Lee Groskup as we start the second quarter. Michigan on top, 3-0. Chip shot field goal by Ali Hajishik. The only scoring thus far. And as we start period number two, it's Ohio State. 
just inside Michigan territory. First and ten. Williams is wide left. Anderson wide to the right. Sleister gives it to Spencer. Another big hole inside the 40 and a first down at the 35-yard line. So on back-to-back -back plays, they've opened big holes for Spencer as Keith Bostick makes the tackle number 13. Coming back with the same play, the sprint draw to the tailback. Tim Spencer came into today's game with 1,011 yards. He is a good one, especially running tackle to tackle. There's the story of the first quarter. And the bottom line, as far as Bo Schenbeckler is concerned, look at time of possession. 11 13 to 347 and in total yards 91 to 45 and yet only three points and here Ohio State is threatening as Frank makes the catch the tight end at the 28 yard line his second reception of the day Mike Boren number 40 who had an outstanding day the last time we featured Michigan on a telecast against Notre Dame earlier in the season makes the tackle. Gain of six. Smith waiting on the sidelines. He's already had two passes picked off today. Ohio State marching here. Second down four from the 29. Sleister, as he did so often against Purdue, audibleizing and giving it to Spencer. And Spencer gets inside the 25 to the 23 yard line as Gash and Boren converge for the tackle. And that will be another Buckeye first down. Impressive drive for Ohio State. Gash and Boren, a fine tandem of linebackers for the Wolverines. Spencer gets a breather here. Jimmy Gale comes in at tailback. He sees a lot of action. He's picked up 649 yards this season, number 26. Rodnax is the fullback. Sleister now wants Gary Williams to set up on the other side, moving him to the left, Anderson to the right. First and ten. Hard to the air. Going over the middle to the tight end. Frank breaks a tackle at the 18-yard line and is smothered at the 15. An impressive drive going now for the Buckeyes. Watch, he fakes to Spencer, who he's been using effectively as an inside runner. And here's Frank, the tight end, on a crossing route, number 89, crossing from right to left. And Mike Bourne, once again, the linebacker, gets the first hit. Second down and two. Schleister now four out of seven for 40 yards. Spencer back in a tailback. Getting close to the 12-yard line. Tony Osmond and Mike Boren making the tackle. And Ohio State has picked up another first down. So the Buckeyes and Bruce, after the first down, Sleister coming over. And part some information does Earl. His third confrontation against Jim Beckler. And the Wolverines winning in 79, losing last season. First down, Ohio State at the 12. Michigan leading 3-0 early. Second quarter. Sleister again checking off. Fullback Broadnax. To about the eight. Keith Bostic coming up to make the tackle along with Mike Boren. Broadnax doesn't carry that often, but when he does, he is a tough inside runner. Spencer, the workhorse on this drive, now has seven carries for 42 yards. Broadnax is a tough man to bring down. 6'3", 252 pounds. Sophomore from Xenia, Ohio. Gain of five, second down, and five. Split Williams to the right. With Frank in motion. Spencer breaking a tackle, getting inside the five to about the three. Looks to be shy of the first down. Bostic and Burgai making the tackle. They'll put it on the four and make it third down and a long one. They ran from split backs that time. Spencer not in his usual eye back position, and he came back off left tackle on the trap play. 11.05 to go in the half. 3-0 Michigan. 
but the Buckeyes threatening. Third and a little more than one with Williams in motion. Give it to Broadnax through the middle. He's got the first down. Jeff Reeves has come in in a safety spot, coming up to make the stop. First and goal. With motion, Vaughn Broadnax, the big 250-pound fullback, comes right up the middle on a quick-hitting trap play and is very close to the end zone. First and goal, Buckeyes. Open up with split backs here. And send Frank in motion. Give it to Spencer. Through the middle he goes. No sign yet from the officials. And shy of the goal line. Second and goal. You're talking about inches now. Warren and Carlton Rose made the stop. So they're inches away. On second down and goal. Schleister. Following that play, ran over to the bench. Got the first-hand word from Earl Bruce. Balls the play in the huddle, and here we go on second and goal. Out of the eye, it's Schleister himself taking it in. Arch Schleister follows Jim DeLeon into the end zone, and the Buckeyes following the pass interception deep in their own territory. Culminate a beautiful drive with Schleister going in for the score. of play action passes good running from the tailback also some good running from the fullback and Schleister himself takes it in on the quarterback sneak Bob Atha who is 37 out of 38 in extra point attempts this season Mike Tomzak to hold There's a man who has his game face on. <laughs> <laughs> is that what a Big Ten game face that's, looks like? That's exactly it? what a game face is. You know, I haven't covered Big Ten football for quite a while. Things have changed since I was last they here. They have. It's become like the old Western Athletic Conference. It's unbelievable. It reminds me of the WAC because, you know, actually, the Big Ten this year has been the passingest conference in America. It's, a, it's unbelievable what's happened throughout the conference. Yep. Here as Atha kicks off, the Buckeyes are on top seven to three, and it's Anthony Carter from the three. Out to the 10, to the 15, slips to the outside, to the 20, to the 30, run out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Anthony Carter averaging better than 24 yards per run back on kickoffs this season. That man is a burner. He has 4-4 speed in the 40-yard dash, and what he's doing at Michigan is that he is rewriting the press guide. By the time he gets uh, out of school, he's going to own so many records that it's going to look like the Anthony Carter book. I guess the only question about Carter would be his durability. 5'11 and 161 pounds and spindly-legged, as you can see. First down from the 33-yard line is Smith. It himself and gets it out to the 40-yard line. Receivers covered. Chris Ream catches up with him. So out of the pocket he comes for a seven-yard gain, second down and three. Chris Ream is a Buckeye with unlimited potential. 6'6", 252 pounds, and he was a three-sport letterman in high school. And he made a marvelous comeback from an injury suffered last year against Michigan. Missed all of spring practice with a pinched nerve in his neck. And a fine job. Second down and three from the 40-yard line. Give it to Wolfolk. And he's bunched up at the line of scrimmage. Pushed back there by Glenn Cobb. And Jerome Foster. It'll be third down and three. 8.55 to go. Third. Second. In the second period, Ohio State after Michigan had taken the early advantage. On top. There's a look at the Michigan offensive line up front. Dixon, the midget, 6'1", 238. <laughs> line averaging 257. Third down at two. A long two. Smith. Overthrowing the intended receiver, Vince Bean. 
Sean Gale was covering. He had Vince Bean wide open, and he was very unhappy with his throw. Here's the play action right now to the tailback. Now, Bean is crossing, and this ball is, well, I used to refer to that as a duck. You throw one up like that, you just, you kind of yell quack, and you, and you hate yourself, but that's the way it is. He's going to have a chance to throw again, but it was a bad pass. Smith tried to find the range. Meanwhile, Don Brackett, the sophomore punter, he was recruited out of Thermopolis, Wyoming. First kick of the day is a bad one off the side of his foot and out of bounds, and they'll line it up and mark it at the 39-yard line. It was Cedric Anderson putting the pressure on Bracken that time, the man who blocked the punt against Purdue. 8-19 to go in the half. Buckeyes by four. Ohio State with the ball at its own 39-yard line, first and 10, 8-19 to go in the half, and the Buckeyes on top, 7-3. to Art Schleister giving it to Broadnax. Fullback takes it on to the 43-yard line. Tony Osmond, number 78. Al Sinchich, number 53. Making the tackle for the Wolverines. I like that broad next. That's the kind of fullback I like to have. When you're a quarterback and you know that you're going to have a certain number of short yardage situations during the course of a game, it's nice to have a 250-pound fullback who can get you those tough yards. Look around Michigan Stadium. Packed, of course. As always, second down six from the 43-yard line. It's Schleister, and a fine catch made by Anderson, low and behind him. And Cedric able to make the grab at the 48 of the Wolverines for a first down. Credit that one to Anderson. Schleister unloads this in a hurry because he reads blitz. He reads the blitz, and he throws the ball under quite a bit of pressure. There is Anderson on the outside making a fine adjustment. Sign of good athletic ability. The Ohio State quarterback, now five out of eight for 50 yards. First and ten from the 48-yard line. Off the play fake, it's Schleister. Incomplete. Bouncing it to Tim Spencer. It'll be second down. Again, we're having technical problems in our coverage of the game between Louisville and Southern Mississippi. So those of you in that region, we can tell you there's still no score in that game, and you'll be seeing the balance of it as soon as the technical difficulties are rectified. Second down and 10. Ohio State at the 47-yard line. Anderson goes into the slot. And he's looking for Anderson, but overthrows him at the 40-yard line. Keith Bostic covering. Third and ten upcoming. Keith Bostic considered probably the best athlete that the Wolverines have. Certainly the best athlete on the defensive unit been effective both on coverage and on support. Earl Bruce ending in the play with a fullback broad next. On third down, 10. Buckeyes with a 47-yard line. Ohio State leading it 7-3. 7-14 to go. Second period. On third and 10. Schleister looking for Anderson, almost makes the catch, but no, at the 23-yard line. Burgay and Jackson covering on the play. This pass is certainly not an artistic success, but it does get there. Anderson is running a corner route. He runs down, makes a little move inside, back to the corner. The ball hits him in the hands. Should have had it. Edwards stands at his 40-yard line, and only Anthony Carter drops back deep for the Wolverines. He's at the 10. Good snap. Wolverines set up the return. And bouncing sideways at the 15-yard line and down to there. Michigan takes possession at that spot after a 32-yard punt and 6.58 to go in the half. 
press box at Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. Woody Hayes is here. He is somewhere in the press box, out of our camera range, however. But the former Ohio State coach was invited to the game by Earl Bruce yesterday. Accepted the invitation, flew up with the Buckeyes last night, and is in attendance at Michigan Stadium today. Wolverines from the 15-yard line, first and 10. Smith on the option, pitching to Wolfolk. And the late developing play, next four out to the 19-yard line as Anthony Griggs comes up to make the tackle. I covered this very game in 1969 when Bo Schembechler was in his first year at Michigan going against his former mentor, Woody Hayes. So often it was the Bo and Woody show. Yep. And they used to call this conference Big Two, Little Eight. That has changed. It has. It could be Iowa in the Rose Bowl. It could be Iowa and Washington State. That be Who would have thought? Hmm. Second down six from the 19-yard line. Big hole through the middle. Lawrence Ricks, his first carry of the day, and the backup tailback takes it all the way out to the 37-yard line. Lawrence Ricks, the man who backs up Wolfolk, out to the 37 for a first down. Lawrence Ricks is not your average backup tailback. This is a man who could start for just about any college in America. Ricks, Wolfolk, and Edwards last season combined for over 2,700 yards. Nine touchdowns this season scored by Ricks. He nets 18 yards on the last carry from the 37. First down, Michigan. Six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Call his number again. And out to the 43 goes Lawrence, where Glenn Cobb makes the stop. Here's a look at the fluid running ability of tailback Lawrence Ricks. And look at the surge of that huge Michigan offensive line. For a man who's a backup, not bad numbers for a career right there. Averaging five yards a carry. Second down, four. And before the inception of the play, whistles. Whistle stops the play. And markers down. Procedure is the call against the Wolverines. Coming up, second half of our NCAA doubleheader, the Trojans and Marcus Allen against the Bruins from the Los Angeles Coliseum, plus reports from the Washington Washington State team next weekend. Friday telecast, remember, over the Thanksgiving period, Notre Dame, Miami, doubleheader Saturday, Penn State against top Frank Pitt. Bear Bryant goes for 315 against Auburn. Beckler wants some word directly from the officials as to what the infraction was. Not that he'll necessarily agree with it. Just clarifying. And behind the bench. what's happening is the referee gets on the headphone Tom Quinn and it's just as much a mystery to us right now as it is to you but we'll check downstairs and see exactly what the problem is Call. I would uh, normally suspect it might be something to do with the clock. But... They have. 
had to now we're getting the word they had to run some time off the clock and now they are simply correcting the clock I started to say I didn't think it was a problem with the clock but as it turns out they had to run about 15 seconds off it and now we've got that squared away as you take a look at some scores games getting in the way Notre Dame and Penn State tied 7 7 Mountaineers have a 10 nothing lead over Syracuse in the second quarter second down and nine from the 38 yard line and it's Smith keeping 45 to the 50 and for a first down to the Buckeye 47 yard line Stan Edwards made the block that was able to spring Smith that time for the first Steve Smith on the scramble play he's setting up for play action pass now here you see some of the speed that we talked about earlier the block by Edwards springs him and you catch that four or five forty speed in the open field versatile quarterback first down Wolverines at the Buckeye 48 just over five minutes to go in the half Buckeyes leading seven to three Inside the 45, and a penalty marker is down as he is tackled at the 43-yard line. Holding against Michigan. I think the guilty party was Stephen Humphreys, number 76, left guard. That disrupts a drive. Now we have an obvious pass situation. Let's see if they go to the favorite target, Anthony Carter. Moves it back into Michigan territory. Put it down at the 46. Marcus Merrick, the leading tackler on the team. We've talked about him. He gets blocked well, but he recovers and gets in on the tackle. from the spot of the infraction costing them eight yards and making it first down and 18 from the 46 yard line. Smith is still trying to find the range today. Receivers covered and tackled from behind at the 46 yard line by number 96 Mike DeAndrea 6'4 senior out of Akron Ohio. He was looking for Anthony Carter that time and Carter was going deep for the first time of the day. Carter covered. Smith gets a couple out to the 46, make it second down and 16. Sent Carter to the left, and Bean split to the right. Second down and 16. Smith under some pressure, dumps it over the middle to Dunaway, and he takes it to the Buckeye 40-yard line. Marcus Merrick making the tackle. Gain of 13. It'll be third down, call it two and a half from the 40. Play action fake to the tailback Ricks this time. Setting up behind the left. A good time once again. A little pressure there. And here's Dunaway, number 88, who slides in underneath the coverage. Good call. That gets them close. Third down and a long two from the 40. Don't get the first as Edwards is stopped after a gain of one. Fourth down, about a yard and a half to go. The ball now at the 39-yard line, and the clock running with three minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. the chains the officials calling time is an injured Buckeye it's Jerome Foster Jerome number 55 Foster, who is down on the turf so an official's timeout here all teams have all three timeouts remaining in a rapidly paced first half so timeout on the field with 301 to go in the half 7-3 Ohio State Jerome Foster was assisted off the field. Dave Persilius takes his spot on the defensive line, and Michigan will go for it on fourth down and one at the Ohio State 39-yard line, 3.01 to go in the half. Smith on the option, keeping, trying to fight forward for the first down. Marcus Merrick pushing him back, number 36. They needed a yard. Buckeyes think they have held. 
official timeout as they spot it right at the 38. Just looking at it from here, Cupper, I don't think they have it. Crucial fourth and one situation. It is part two of the option play in which the quarterback keeps it himself. He went high. I think he should have gone low if he wants to get that crucial yardage. And to me, it looks like the Buckeyes have held. That's from this vantage point. And they have. So Michigan, with three minutes to go in the first half, going for it. And now the Buckeyes take over at their own 38-yard line. They lead 7-3. And with 2.56 now remaining in the first half, Ohio State has all of its timeouts remaining. The key man in the Buckeyes 3-4 defense is inside linebacker Marcus Merrick, number 16. And that is a clinic right there. That is a picture-perfect tackle right on the numbers of Steve Smith. Schleister leading the Buckeyes now on first down at Spencer. Quickly ahead out to the 45-yard line. Gets about six. Closer to seven. Call it second down and three at the 45-yard line. Spencer out. And Jimmy Gale in at the tailback spot. Spencer has carried ten times for 51 yards. Broadnax is the fullback. Gale is the tailback. Second down and a long three. Breaks the tackle at the 40, but still in a lot of trouble, and down he goes at the 38-yard line. Ben Needham and Keith Bostic catching up with him. Tony Osborne nearly got him initially, but he was able to break free from Osborne, and then he's brought down at the 38. And the clock continues to run with under two minutes now, 155, 154, and counting down, first half. Third down, they're back almost to the initial line of scrimmage. Third down, let's call it 11. And third down, and just over 10 yards. At the 38. Schleister hit as he throws, and incomplete. Intended for Gary Williams, and Schleister shaken up. Art really took a pop as he unloaded. It was Jerry Burgai blitzing through to Dex Schleister. And he's in some agony right now. See if we can see Burgai on the blitz. Schleister play action pass. There he's coming from the top of your screen. You see the hit on Schleister. It looks like he got a bruise on his hip. Ohio State to kick. With Edwards to boot it away on fourth down, standing at his own 25-yard line. Anthony Carter, single safety for Michigan at his own 25. High floating kick. Carter's going to let it bounce and then field it at the 18-yard line. And drop at the 24, his forward progress to that spot. And the crowd getting on the Buckeyes for what they feel is a little overzealousness. There is Schleister. He's moving pretty good. I think he's all right. If you're going to get shaken up, it's a most opportune time just before the hash because it, at least it gives you that extra amount of time to recover. At least 20 minutes. 121 to go. First half. Ohio State leading at 7-3. to three. Michigan from the 25-yard line. And Smith carries himself out to the 32. Still running. Michigan, all of its timeouts left. Hurry up offense. No huddle here, second down, two and a half from the 32. Edwards looking for the first down and is close as Glenn Cobb makes the tackle at the 35 yard line. Jerome Foster. Back in the game, number 55 for the Buckeyes. Now, with Michigan picking up the first down, just outside the 35-yard line, they spend their first time out with 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Ohio State on top after the Wolverines had taken the 
initial advantage on a short field goal by Ali Haji Sheik, Arch Leister, leading them on a beautifully conceived drive and taking it in himself from the one yard line for the touchdown. 7 3 Buckeyes. The other key game, of course, is the confrontation on, today on, with on, Michigan man. State taking on Iowa at Iowa City. That game will be getting underway in about half an hour. Again, if the Buckeyes win here, they would earn at least a share of the conference title. But to go to the Rose Bowl, they would need a Spartan victory over the Hawkeyes at Iowa City. First and ten, Michigan from the 35-yard line. Smith to the 43, the B. down. Fine catch by Bean, his first reception of the day. And a great throw by Smith. That is his best pass of the afternoon. He really drills this ball. Watch how much authority he puts on this football. Right here. Stands tall in the pocket, throws the ball to the outside. Deep hook pattern to Bean along the sideline. Great shot. First and ten from the 43 clock. 38 seconds remaining in a one hopper incomplete at the 38 yard line intended for Craig Dunaway the tight end second down and that stops the clock with 35 seconds remaining in the half Smith five of 11 for 75 yards in the passing department not a bad afternoon but so far he's just a little tentative at times and on two occasions on interceptions he has thrown the ball late Trying to move the Wolverines in here with second down and 10 at the 43-yard line. 35 seconds remaining. First half. Good protection. Goes out in the flat and dropped there by Ricks. Ricks thinking about where he was going to go before he had possession of the football. 30 seconds to go. That is the obvious outlet pass during the hurry-up offense. You look downfield, try to throw the ball along the sideline. If no one is open, you dump it out to the little swing back, and he can take it upfield and step out of bounds himself. 30 seconds left. Third down, 10 from the 43. Wolverines moving with the wind at their backs. Bullet over the middle is nearly intercepted. Glenn Cobb was right there. The pass intended for B. Smith is fortunate that was not pickoff number three. He almost has his third interception today. As we look at Cobb taking his drop, that's Merrick initially. Cobb comes into your picture late. He had the ball right in his hands. A sure interception. So it's fourth down and ten at the 43-yard line with 25 seconds remaining in the half. And the Wolverines will go for it. Rockington, Fred Rockington, comes in as a wide receiver split to the right. Smith looking for Carter and throwing underneath at the 22-yard line will take over with 18 seconds now remaining in the first half at their own 43-yard line. Stan Edwards is running a deep swing pattern along the sidelines. Here's the pass thrown by Smith, and as you can see, it's just a little low. Edwards is in an open area in the zone coverage. Sean Gale, the, the deep man in that zone. Ohio State possession now with just 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Buckeyes at the 43-yard line. It's a typical Ohio State-Michigan score, yet we've seen far more liberal offense cover than we have in past games between these two schools. I was thinking the same thing. Pretty much the type of football game we forecast at the top of the show. We predicted that it would be a low-scoring game, which has been so characteristic of this series. However, there has been a lot of movement offensively for both teams. Exactly. Also, some effectiveness on the return game. The offenses have been anything but conservative, except in this particular situation here, where Schleister will be very content just to run the clock out. Well done by the quarterback, so they will let the pass four games, but they've been stymied by the Ohio State defense and by their own mistakes in the first 30 minutes. Hail to the victors. The salute to Michigan. You like that fight?
fight song. I love that fight song. That's terrific. Crowd of about 105,000 and the Ohio State fans up from Columbus as they await the re-entry of the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's been quite a while also, Cumber, talking about the Big Ten race. It's a team has gone into the Rose Bowl with two conference losses. It has been a while, hasn't it? And that will be the case this year. And, of course, when Michigan lost its second conference battle of the year to Iowa four weeks ago, it looked like they would be finished. At that point, Bo Schembechler said there was no chance for a Rose Bowl. He changed his tune now. But they got a break from Minnesota when Minnesota knocked off Ohio State two weeks ago. And the way things developed in the conference, Purdue fell out of contention. Wisconsin, after the great start, fell out of contention. Iowa, of course, still hanging in and hopeful of being in Pasadena on New Year's Day. Hang on, Sloopy, from the Ohio State Band. Seven to three. As we take a look at the numbers through the first 30 minutes. What's interesting as we look at this is that Michigan continues to dominate the game statistically. They're playing their kind of football game. Look at the yards rushing. They have controlled the football on the ground. 192 total yards. They have been able to keep the football. 17 minutes, 56 seconds to 12.04 for Ohio State. But two critical turnovers have really made an important difference right there two interceptions by quarterback steve smith and that's exactly what bo schembechler did not want he used the old cliche at the top of our show mistakes will kill you they would have to eliminate mistakes in order to win the football game today so that's what they're going to have to do in this second half if they want to come back and win otherwise we have an upset in the making Second half of the doubleheader to follow. SC and UCLA and reports from Seattle. Washington against Washington State as the Pac-10 determines its conference champion and Rose Bowl representative. Ohio State to receive the second half kickoff. Ali Haji Sheik who accounted for all of the Michigan scoring in the first half. Kicking away to Tim Spencer and Vic Langley direction of Langley. Five yards in, downs it there. Buckeyes come out to the 20-yard line. Ohio State, the Probables, Schleser, the quarterback, Broadnax and Spencer, who alternates with Gale at the tailback spot. Anderson and Williams, the wide receivers, and up front, Robert Zelensky, De Leon, Lucan Smith, and the tight end, John Frank. First down, Ohio State at the 20. Spencer, gain of a couple. Up front, you've got Tony Osborne, the junior from Kenton, Ohio. Defensive tackle. The freshman, Al Simpson from Cleveland, Ohio. And Winfred Carraway on the other side. The outside linebacker is a good one, Robert Thompson, but he's been bothered by injuries. Gear Gash, the linebacker, along with Mike Moore in number 40. And Ben Needham. Second down, eight from the 22-yard line. Temperature, low 30s. They expected some snow flurries during the game, but we haven't had any. Field, which was covered all day yesterday during the snow, in good shape. On second down and eight, they give it to Spencer again, and he takes it out to the 25-yard line. The secondary for Michigan, Brian Carpenter, probably the best of the four. Jerry Burgay, Keith Bostick, Jr. from here in Ann Arbor, and Tony Jackson, the free safety, 5'10", 174-pound senior. Third down and five, Smith loosening up on the sidelines for Michigan. He must find his touch here in the second half. Absolutely. Five. 
Kleister. And Williams makes the one-handed grab at the 34-yard line. Run out of bounds there by Jerry Burgoy. Good read by Art Schleister as we look at Williams, number 44, the most prolific receiver in Buckeye history. Here is a one-handed catch. Look at the hand-eye coordination, the concentration as he's being hit. He is aware of the sideline. He is aware of the football and the fact that a man is right on him when he kicks the coverage. And his streak goes on 35 straight, in which he has now caught a pass. First down, Buckeyes from the 34-yard line. It's Gale. Jimmy out to the 36. Carlton Rose, number 89, in on the tackle for the Wolverines. Gain of two, second down and eight. Art Schleister now six of 13 in the passing department for 59 yards. Ne neither quarterback over the 50% mark right now. Ohio State with the lead, seven to three. Early in the third period. Schleister to the 40-yard line, complete to Frank. Shy of the first down by four with third down upcoming. Keith Bostick wrapped up Frank at the 40. Now he's at 50%. Now he's 7 of 14 in the passing department. Throwing to his tight end on a little crossing route. And there are another good hit by Bostick, who is considered maybe the best athlete on the team. Third down and a long three. Just outside the 40-yard line. And Schleister overthrowing his intended receiver, the tight end, Frank, and upset with himself. Cedric Anderson was going deep. Frank about 15 yards down the sideline, and Schleister can't hit him. So the Buckeyes to kick it away. Anthony Carter dropping back deep. Carter averaging 12.3 yards per return today. He's returned three. Carl Edwards, his fourth punt of the afternoon. The man who saw his first action of last season just last week against Northwestern. Good snap. Wolverines hopeful of setting up a return. But Carter will call for the fair catch and then let it bounce. The ball starts to travel sideways, and the Buckeyes cover it at the 25-yard line. Tim Spencer downing it there after a cut of only 34 yards. Michigan coming out with Smith at quarterback. They'll start with Edwards and Wolf, both the running backs. Carter and Bean, the wideouts. And the men up front. Big, strong, good offensive line. First down from the 26. Wolfolk out past the 30 to the 40 and to the 45 yard line where Garcia Lane makes the tackle. Pickup of 19. This is exactly the kind of start that Michigan had hoped for here in the second half. The base play in the I formation, the blast play off left tackle to number 24, tailback Butch Wolfen. Here is a man who has peaked at the right time throughout his career. He had 141 yards in the ball game last year against Ohio State, 183 yards in the Rose Bowl. First and 10, Michigan from the 45-yard line. to the 47 for a gain of two. An upgrade for Ohio State, Jerome Foster, who was shaken up briefly in the first half. Nick Miller, senior out of Upland, Pennsylvania. And Chris Ream, third man on the line. The linebackers on the outside, you've got Anthony Griggs. Then inside, the tandem of Lynn Cobb and the team's leading tackler, Marcus Merrick. And on the outside, Mike D'Andrea. Second down, eight. Wolverines from the 47-yard line. 11 minutes to go, third quarter. Buckeyes leading by four. Smith to Carter. Pushed back from the 43-yard line. Enough for the first down with his forward progress. Sean Gale driving it back. 
We said that Steve Smith would have to find his touch here in the second half. He has found it. Look, that's throwing the football with authority. Good timing, good touch. The out pattern to number one, Anthony Carter, a young man who became a household word in college football last year because of his all-purpose play. Perfect route, perfect timing by Smith. Smith now 6 out of 15 for 85 yards. First down at the Ohio State 43. Wolfolk wrapped up. Chris Reen with his arms around him. Gain of a yard and a half. Secondary for Ohio State. You've got Sean Gale, sophomore. Kevin Bell is just a freshman. Doug Hill, a sophomore. Garcia Lane, a sophomore. Three sophomores and a freshman. Let's go, let's go. The Buckeye let's go, secondary. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Second down. Nine from the 42-yard line. Dunaway is in motion. First man through. Edwards inside the 35 for a first down to the 25-yard line. Doug Hill, Garcia Lane converge on the stop. And Edwards picks up Michigan's third successive first down. Stan Edwards, the fullback, who has been a tailback at times on a quick hitting play right up the middle. He runs to daylight. Bubba Paris opening the hole for him. First down, Michigan. At the 25-yard line. Edwards again over the right side. It's three close to four. Marcus Merrick making the tackle. Dan Edwards has not been used that much. He had 385 yards coming into today's game. But he has the potential to be dangerous both as an inside and outside runner. He has played the tailback position effectively at times as well as fullback. Second down. Six at the 21. Wolfolk to the 16-yard line. It'll be third down and about a yard. Cobb and Merrick converge on the tackle. Running behind that elephant team, Michigan line. A line, an offensive line that averages 256 pounds. Moransky, I guess, is the biggest at 275. Second tight end comes in for Michigan on third down and a yard. As Dunaway sets up on the right side, bets the tight end on the left side. Wolfolk inside the 15-yard line. And Michigan with an impressive drive as Griggs and Merrick make the stop. Their fourth first down on this series. Butch will fault the tailback on another one of the base plays. The sprint draw play off the left tackle. Merrick, number 36, gets the first hit. Griggs follows up. Big first down for the Wolves. Wolfolk, 58 yards, 13 carries. First down at the 14-yard line. Butch again. He gets to the 10-yard line. Chris Ream, number 93, making the tackle. This is the kind of drive that has to please Bo Schembechler. It's the way he likes to operate. He is essentially a conservative coach. He likes the running game, strong defense, the kicking game, and then high percentage pass, usually play action, or sprint out types. Second down, seven. With Dunaway in motion, it's Edward. Over right guard, taking it to the six. And it will be third down, about two and a half. Griggs and Cobb making this up. Spotted right at the six yard line. Call it third down and three. A tailback oriented team, but they have used their fullback, Stan Edwards, effectively today also. They 
Jason Carter to the right. A third and three. And Smith gets dropped at the nine. Sean Gale charging through number two to stop him on the option. So back to the nine, and they'll go for three as Haji Sheik comes in. Michigan has not been effective in short yardage situations using the option play. They're trying it again. Here is a great read by number two, Sean Gale, shooting the gap and hitting the quarterback before he can operate the option play. Haji Sheik now directly in front of the goalpost. 25-yard attempt. They'll spot it at the 15-yard line. B.J. Dickey to hold. And Haji Sheik's kick is good. So he has accounted for all of the Michigan scoring. Wolverines on the board with 5.38 to go. Third quarter, 7-6. Buckeye. Ali Haji Sheik, in the first 10 games of the season, had kicked only three field goals, three out of eight. But he's two for two today. And he has pulled Michigan to within a point. Ohio State 7, Michigan 6. Five minutes and 38 seconds remaining. Third quarter with Haji Sheik to kick off. Tim Spencer and Victor Langley back deep for the Buckeyes. Spencer letting it bounce through the end zone. Buckeyes unable to get anything started on their initial drive in this quarter. will again start this one from the 20-yard line. And this is an important drive for an important series, I should say, for Michigan's defense because the momentum right now seems to have swung back around. That last drive was really the type of drive that you associate with Michigan football. Clemson strapping. Two-point lead over South Carolina. Longhorns have the initial advantage there. Southern Mississippi. What a year they're having. Louisville. And Penn State with a 10-point advantage over Notre Dame at State College on first down. It's Spencer looking for some room and finding none and tackled by Paul Geergas slicing through at the 19. Paul Geergas, only 6'1", 205 pounds. Very mobile though, very active. 117 total tackles on the year. He has been busy. Second down, 10 at the 20. Schuster off a straight drop, wobbly pass, and tip and intercepted at the 48-yard line by Jackson. Keith Bostick with the tip. the tip drill earlier in the day. Now we're going to see it again. Cedric Anderson, number 22, is the intended receiver. Now watch the tip by number 13 with his left hand, and he flips the ball up over his shoulder, and then finally the ball is intercepted with a juggling catch along the sideline by number 37, Tony Jackson. Big break for the Wolverines. First Great big play. turnover of the day for Michigan. First down at the Ohio State 48-yard line. Smith right to the air, and it's tipped and incomplete. Chris Green was the man who came charging in number 93 with his hands up to get a hand on it. 4.44 to go in the third. Art Schleister, as we talked about earlier, has had a great career at Ohio State. He's closing out that career today, but you pointed out that he has had problems against Michigan, particularly with interceptions. Big pickoff here as Michigan tries to retake the advantage. They trail by one on second down and 10 from the 48. Smith keeping inside the 40, has the first down. Out of bounds he goes at the 35-yard line. Run out there by Garcia Lane. That is a better time to run the option play. He has not been effective on short yardage situations running the option. Here he is on second and long yardage, and it's part two of the triple option. Stan 
Edwards taking out Glenn Cobb on the play to make some room for Smith. First down, Michigan at the 35. a face mask ball on Marcus Merrick number 36 that's it Wolf doing it himself that time barreling through and they'll pick up 15 more as they march it down to the 14-yard line on the face mask infraction. See if we can pick it up. Marcus Merrick, the leading tackler on the team, number 36, inside linebacker, wards off a block by Edwards and then collides with number 24. And right here, I assume, is where we have the face mask. Ball at the 14-yard line. 4.28 to go, third period. Ohio State leading 7-6. First and ten, Wolf off with a big hole, but down he goes at the ten-yard line. One-on-one -on -one tackle by Marcus Merrick. Easy to see why he had 140 total tackles in 1980. He had 127 tackles coming into today's game. Wards off a blocker again, and there is a great open field mm. tackler right there. Second down, and a long six. Marcus Merrick is going to be in line for our most valuable player award today. Here it is, the cutback once again. Same play that we saw a moment ago. Wolfick on the tailback blast off the right side. Cuts back to his left. There again. Guess who? So at the seven, it is third down and three. They send Carter to the left. Wolfolk is the tailback. There's Schembechler. Edwards the fullback. Give it to Edwards and he's wrapped up. Merrick was in on that play, along with Glenn Cobb. So again, Ohio State stiffening, and it's fourth down, two, with Haji Sheik to come in again. Six so, times to the Rose Bowl in 12 seasons, a total of eight bowl games in the 12 years that he's been here. Interestingly enough, Ali Haji Sheik having a disappointing year as far as field goals were concerned, only three of eight in 10 games, trying to kick his third today and put Michigan out on top. 23-yard attempt. And it's good. So Ali Hajishi, born here in Ann Arbor, with as many field goals today as he had in the 10 prior games this year, Wolverines by two. At Iowa City, they're underway in Iowa have demonstrated for now their minds are on their business. Brian Clark's pass on the first play of from scrimmage in the game. Andre Tippett picks it off after it's batted into the air. He loses it out of bounds, but no matter, it's Iowa's ball at the 18-yard line. A few plays later, Bill Blatcher goes in from nine yards out, and in the first quarter, Iowa leads Michigan State 7-0, hoping to go to Pasadena, now back to Al. All right, Jim. So 7-0 Hawkeyes there, 9-7 Michigan here. Aji Sheik to kick off for Michigan. I mentioned that Ali was born right here at the University of Michigan Medical Center. His father was an instructor here and is now a professor at the Arlington branch of the University of Texas. As Ali puts it into the air, Spencer Fielding from the 5 to the 10. 15, dropped at the 16-yard line. Hit hard by Carlton Rose. Can all Michigan so far here in the second half. Very similar in a sense to the first quarter. And in exactly. the second quarter, it's when Ohio State was able to move 82 yards methodically and judiciously and score its only touchdown. They try to recapture that magic here as they start from the 17-yard line. Michigan 
two field goals here in the half. And on top, nine to seven. Sleece to the quarterback on first down from the 17. Broken play. Sleece Out to the 21-yard line. Keith Bostick and Paul Geargaz coming up to make the tackle. Either it was broken play or a very good bootleg. I would suspect the former. Yes. Second down, six. Twenty-one yard line. Rodnax the fullback. Spencer the tailback. Spencer fights his way through the middle, close to the 24-yard line. Your gash and Thompson is converging on the stop. It's third down and three at the 24. 110 to play, third period. Michigan nine, Ohio State seven. Williams to the left. Off the fake. Going for the tight end. Frank over the middle at the 50-yard line and stays with it to make the catch and gets hammered by Bostick and Burgai. Great concentration by Frank and a lot of traffic on a wobbly pass to make the catch. First down, Buckeyes. This might be Sleester's best pass of the day. A little bootleg action to the right. Sets up behind his right guard. Here's Frank, the tight end. Now watch Bostick come into your picture and Burgai to give him a little sandwich in the secondary. Another look. And you can see how that ball really threaded the needle. It had to be right there. From the 47. It's Spencer taking it to the 44. It wasn't your artistic perfect spiral, but it was right where it had to be. Kind of the old Bobby Lane pass. Yeah. That's right. I think I'm dating myself when I talk about Bobby <laughs> Lane. Uh. Joe Cap threw a few of those, too. And had a lot of success. Gain of four, second down, six. Ten seconds with the clock running. In the third period. And the Buckeyes will not get a playoff as they let time run out. In Chile, Ann Arbor, here we go. Into the fourth quarter, Ohio State has the ball at the Michigan 44-yard line. Second down and six. Michigan on top, 9-7. to seven. And Art Schleister back to throw on second down. Under some pressure, and it's intercepted at the 10-yard line by Brian Carpenter. Carpenter out to the 15. And dropped at the 18-yard line. The second Michigan interception in this half. Big turnover for the Wolverines. Mark Sleister is trying to throw to number 22, Cedric Anderson, his wide receiver. The ball is thrown short and to the inside. And number nine, Brian Carpenter, is right there. And this is maybe the biggest turnover of the day right here and a big break for the Wolves. Michigan at its own 19-yard line, first and 10. Let's wall fall. Good sized hole and he exploits it but loses the ball and Ohio State has it at the 28 yard line. So they give it right back. Sean Gale coming up with the football. Kelvin Bell and Doug Hill making the hit on Wolfo. And Ohio State is right back in business at the Michigan 27 yard line. Turnover for turnover. A view from the linebacker's point of view right here. Wolfuck, the hit is by Bell. And Gale comes in on the recovery. The Buckeyes at the 27 of Michigan. 14.40 to go in the game. Michigan on top, 9-7. To and in a split-back formation this time. Spencer 
Inside the 25, gets to the 23-yard line. It'll be second down and six. Look again how Michigan has taken charge of the football game in terms of total yards and also in time of possession. But it's so close on the scoreboard, and right now the Buckeyes are threatening. They could take, they could regain the lead very easily. So these stats are misleading. Michigan running off 28 more offensive plays. Jimmy Gale in a tailback on second down and six from the 23 with Frank in motion. It's Gale. No room at all. Al Sinsich came in to wrap him up from behind. No game. Third down and six. Art Schleister has been effective at times today throwing to his tight end with play action passes. We'll see if he goes back to that. The wind has died down some. Ohio State moving with the wind here in the fourth period. Third down and six at the 23. Off the fake. Schleister looking for Spencer. Incomplete. Carlton Rose drifting back to cover on the play. Gash for Michigan, the linebacker, almost gets the hit on Schleister. He is the one who forces Schleister to throw the ball fast, and he overthrows Spencer along the sideline. Paul Giergash, the inside linebacker for the Wolves, second leading tackler on the team behind Boren. So here is Bob Ethan now. Line of scrimmage 23, spotted at the 30 at an angle, 40-yard kick with the win. 12 out of 16 for the season. Mike Tomzak holds. It's long enough, but it is no good. Wide to the right. Bob Ethan, Eric on his first try of the day. 13.07 to go in the game. Still Michigan by two. 13 minutes and seven seconds remaining in the game. Michigan nine, Ohio State seven. Bob Atha missing on an opportunity a 40-yard field goal attempt that would have given ohio state the lead back instead the wolverines at their own 23-yard line first and ten smith giving it to wolfolk hit immediately dropped after a gain of maybe half a yard by chris green and glenn cobb minimal gain let's call it second down nine at the 24-yard line that says it all. <laughs> Smith on second and nine. Going over the middle, he's got Carter at the 40-yard line, and he takes a shot, but it's a first down for the Wolverine. Sean Gale, Kelvin Bell, in on the tackle along with Glenn Cobb. I said earlier that Steve Smith would have to find his touch here in the second half. Watch. He is throwing the ball with a lot more touch over the linebacker into the hands of the fluid wide receiver, Anthony Carter, number one, who before he's through will probably be the most effective all-purpose player in Big Ten history if he stays healthy. On first down, it's Edwards for a gain of three to the 44-yard line. Steve Smith is now 7 out of 17. He's over the 100 mark, 102 yards through the air. Second down, 7. Quarterback comparison right there. Pretty even, neither quarterback having a great day. The ball might be a little wet. But the weather is not all that bad, frankly. I expected it to be worse. Temperature about 32. Wind, though, has died down a bit. Second down and seven. It's Lawrence Ricks to midfield and very close to a first down. Ricks spelling Wolfolk at tailback. Marcus Merrick and Anthony Griggs making the tackle. Ball into Ohio State territory. And they will bring in the chain. Michigan and Ohio State every year. Yeah. To the wire. 
This year, of course, Iowa still in the picture. Hawkeyes leading in their game, seven nothing against Michigan State. Shy of the first down by that much. It'll be third down and inches at the Buckeye 49-yard line. That kind of tells the story of the ball control offense of Michigan. 216 yards on the ground to 78 for the Buckeyes. The way Bo Schembechler likes to control the football game. On third and inches, it's Edwards getting the first down as he takes it to the 48-yard line. That was an interesting call because the motion man became the lead blocker. Clemson by eight over South Carolina. Second period. Longhorns, another touchdown to lead by 14. And Louisville, look, he there. Leading Southern Mississippi in the fourth. Arkansas, first quarter. Big game in the Southwest Conference on top. First down from the 48-yard line. Smith on the option. And slips forward down to the 43-yard line where Glenn Cobb is in on the tackle. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the game. Old open bucket at stake right there. For Northwestern going for 31. Wisconsin. The lead there, and Iowa lead against Michigan State. Second down five at the Buckeye 43. four-yard line just about back to the line of scrimmage when it looked as if he might be going through a loss of five or six good running by Lawrence Ricks it looked like he would have had a big loss there but he turned it into about a two-yard game actually they'll spot it at the 44 back a yard Notre Dame with a touchdown to make it 17 14 Penn State third quarter Lions trying to rebound after last week's loss to Alabama third down and six from the 44 Smith over the middle finds his man Carter to the 32 yard line and a first down Garcia Lane in on the stop and Smith under pressure that time from Jerome Foster Let's watch the pressure, and there's the fake to the tailback. He sets up. You see the pressure coming in. The ball is thrown perfectly. Now he has found the range. Now he's found the touch. He's throwing the ball at the numbers. Deep curl-in route by Anthony Carter from his wide receiver position coming from his left to right. The ball right on the numbers. Carter splitting out to the left on first down at the 32-yard line. Michigan moving into the win. Smith looking for Carter again. Overthrows him. Second down. Anthony Carter is open again on this last play. He's running the identical route. It's the curl in. That ball was thrown a little bit high. It was a catchable pass. I have seen him make catches like that. But the previous time he threw it exactly where it should have been thrown. That is right on the numbers. Second and ten. Ricks to the 30. Jerome Foster making the stop. Jerome Foster, the junior, coming home to play. Is from Detroit, 6'3", 255 pounder. He was all Big Ten last year. Consistency is his trademark. Third down, eight at the 29. Eight minutes, 55 seconds remaining in the game. Michigan leading nine to seven. Smith on a big play here. Going for Bean, and he makes the catch at the eight-yard line, just inbound. Receiver. You hear so much about Carter, nobody talks about 
talks about Bean. Big play here. Vince Bean is the second leading receiver on the team, and he's at his wide receiver position on the right. He goes down. He really gets the defense backing up, and he cuts to the outside. And here is a perfect sideline route. That's about as nice as you're ever going to see the sideline pattern run right there. One foot in, that's all you need in college football. First down and goal, Wolverines at the eight. They have yet to penetrate the goal line. All the scoring on three field goals. Smith putting it up for Carter. Can't make the play. Garcia Lane covering on a timing play. Exactly, that is a pure timing route. All the quarterback does is take one, two, three, throw the ball. It was really supposed to have been thrown over his inside shoulder into the corner of the end zone. It was thrown too far to the outside. Carter tried to make the adjustment, but he couldn't reach it. Second down, goal from the eight. Eight minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. Double tight end set up with Carter split to the left. The fake to Rex. Going and throws it behind Craig Dunaway, who had slipped open in the end zone. He looked at Carter in the left corner, who was covered by Gale, trying to go back to Dunaway and throw it behind him. Dunaway at the right tight end spot takes an inside release, down, makes a little move to the outside first, cuts back to the inside. Now he's open. Now he's open right there. And the ball is thrown late and behind him. Bob falling down on the play. So six points go a wasting. It's third down. Goal at the eight. Smith under a lot of pressure. It's tipped in the end zone. of the tight end going to the corner of the end zone and let's watch for Kelvin Bell on a sensational interception. The tip first by Sean Gale and the teamwork by number four Bell in the end zone. Big break for the Buckeyes. Third interception for the Buckeyes today. They take over at the 20, 832 remaining in the game. Slayster giving it to Spencer. Pushing his way forward, gets to the 25, ball comes loose, but after the whistle. Smith now 10 of 23 in the passing department, but interceptions have killed him today. Spencer with a five-yard pickup. Second down, five at the 25. Now on top, 16 to nothing. Divided concentration for the Hawkeyes. They're thinking about this one as well. Frank makes the catch. First down, then they push him back. Should give him forward progress out past the 30. Carlton Rose bending him back. 189 tackles the other. First down at the 31. Arch Schleister has been most effective today throwing to his tight end. This has been one of the big plays. Crossing pattern from left to right. John Frank, 35 catches, 345 yards coming into today's game. And that's been his best pattern right there. Seven minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the game. Michigan leading nine to seven. First and ten. Spencer taking it out to the 33-yard line. Tony Osmond making the tackle. Frank now has six catches for 63 yards. Far and away, he's his favorite target today. Clock running as we approach the seven-minute mark. Three field goals by Ali Haji Sheik, accounting for the nine points for Michigan. Second half of the doubleheader, SC-UCLA coming up. Second down and eight. Schleister 
going for Frank again, stretching and can't make the catch at the 40-yard line covered by Gerges. Third down coming up. Frank going up the seam this time, and he is covered by a linebacker, Gergas. Watch Gergas running with Frank. He has two steps on him. Gergas closes the gap. That ball was catchable. What Frank did that time is that he started reaching for the ball a little bit prematurely. You should be a sprinter right up until the moment that the ball gets to your, your hand. Schleister is now 9 out of 21 for 99 yards. It's third down and 8. Buckeyes from the 33-yard line. 6.49 to play. Schleister under pressure. Rolling and throwing off balance. Complete to the 44-yard line to Spencer. What a play by Schleister under a lot of pressure and throwing off balance and finding Spencer. Off balance and moving to his left. This is a great effort by number 10, Arch Schleister. Now watch this. He does a little move here. Escape dimension to the left. He's off balance. Spencer is scrambling along the sidelines. There is the leading ball carrier on the team, this time as a pass receiver. Robert Thompson on the tackle. They needed eight, got 11. First down, Ohio State at the 44-yard line. Clock running, 6.25 to go in the game. The fake to Spencer. Schleister finding Williams, and he is bumped forward down to the 39-yard line. Another first down. Gergash put the pressure on Schleister that time. Gary Williams, who had 46 catches coming into today's game, the career reception leader for Ohio State. Schleister has rolled to his right. Williams on a crossing pattern makes the catch a leaper. Keith Bostick in the secondary gets the hit for the Wolves. Buckeyes at the 39. Under six minutes to go. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. Winfred Caraway makes the tackle. Ideally, right now, this is the kind of drive that Ohio State would continue. They would like to chew up as much time as they possibly could and hopefully get a touchdown now. However, a field goal puts them on top. They're at the 35-yard line, second down and six. Jimmy Gale is in at a running back spot with Broadnax. Leister for Frank, who really gets popped at the 30-yard line. Mike Warren making the hit. And they'll spot it just inside the 30-yard line and very close to a first down. Leister on a roll right now. He's completed his last three again to his favorite target, the tight end John Frank, who now has seven catches on the day. He had 35 catches coming into the day's game for 345 yards. Time out for a measurement. Clock is stopped 501. About two inches. Will Arch Leister call his own number again? I would think so. Or maybe Broadnax. He is now 12 of 24 on the day for 131 yards. Frank far and away his favorite target. Seven catches for 68 yards. The numbers on Schleister and on Smith. Very close, very comparable. Third down, two inches at the 29. Clock now restarted, under five minutes to go. Schleister does call his own number, and the ball squirts loose at the 27-yard line. Loose ball. No signal yet, and now Ohio State maintains possession. Hold on. They picked up the first down. It looked like Lukens, the offensive guard, comes up with a football. Let's see. I do not see the football disappear. There. Now we see it. And that is number 72, Lukens, the offensive right guard, coming up with a football. Surrounded it. 
touchdown, Ohio State. Spencer with some room to the outside. Inside the 25, the 20. And dragged down at the 10-yard line by Brian Carpenter. Spencer exploding to the outside. And another first down. That's why that is the quintessential I formation play, because it really evolves into a triple option for the tailback. He can go inside, he can go straight, or he can go outside. This time he sees daylight to the outside. Gets a good block from Broadnecks originally to spring him, and then he takes it on his own. Spencer, 97 yards on 20 carries. The ball is spotted just inside the 10, so it's first and goal with 420 remaining in the game. Michigan leading 9-7. With Frank in motion, it's Spencer again for a yard and a half, maybe two, close to the seven. Simpson and Caraway making the tackle. This is the classic Michigan Ohio State matchup that we forecast at the top of our show. Low scoring, tough, hard nosed football. Michigan took a 3 0 lead. First period, Ohio State touchdown, second quarter, led 7 3 of the half. Two Ali Haji Sheik field goals here in the second half. They've given Michigan the lead, but the Buckeyes are knocking on the door with second and goal from the eighth. 3 40 to go in the game. It's Spencer again, trying the left side. Gets a yard. Mike Boren making the stop. Picks up maybe a yard and a half. Spotted at the six. Third down and goal. Let's see if Arch Schleister now elects to go to his favorite target, his tight end, John Frank. He has been very effective with play action type passes and then crossing routes to his tight end. Schleister on every play has been sprinting over to the bench, getting the word from Coach Bruce. Back at the helm on third down. Frank sets up on the right side. Jason Williams in motion. Off the face. On a roll. Schleister trying to get a block. Keeping and into the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. What a play by Schleister. Who goes into the wall hard. The patch of ice in the snowbank there. And Art Schleister waiting for the block. Maneuvering. Finding the corner of the end zone. Broadnax was the man out in front. Buckeyes have the lead. is a tribute to the all-around athletic ability of one of the great performers in Big Ten history, Art Schleister. Now watch what happens when he gets to the perimeter. He pauses. He looks for the block. He makes his move back to the outside and into the end zone. Great individual effort by number 10, Art Schleister. Terrific play. 13 to 9 going on 14. Ethan to attempt the extra point. Getting ready to receive the kickoff. Ohio State 14 to 9. All right, Dave, in the Ohio State scoring drive. 13 plays, took them 542. They go 80 yards after the interception. 14 to 9. And again, a look at the touchdown. Great individual effort by Schleister. Watch the timing as he gets to the corner right now. He makes the move inside now, back to the outside. That's the cut. The block from Broadneck set it up originally to get him out there. And there is a great effort by the All-American Art Schleister. And the touchdown was so much more important than a field goal would have been because now yep. Michigan can't win it with a three-pointer. They need the touchdown. They'll be going into the wind, and we have 2.50 to go as Etha puts it in the air. Carter fields on a bounce from the four. 10, 15, 20. To the outside of the 30. And out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. So the Wolverines, who have been unable to get it into the end zone today, will have to do just that. As they spot it at the 38-yard line, they'll need to move 62 yards with 2.43 to go in the game. They have all their timeouts remaining, but they're going to have to get into their hurry-up offense at some point. 
They send Bean to the left, Carter to the right, on first and 10 from the 38. Smith, looking for Bean, incomplete at the 42-yard line. Been under throw to Gale, providing the coverage. Michigan with a decided advantage against opponents in the fourth period. You can throw out all the stats, though, when it's Michigan and Ohio State. That has not been the case today. Second down, 10 from the 38. Smith keeping. Spun down at the 44-yard line. It'll be third and four. Anthony Griggs and Doug Hill converging on the tackle. You would figure right now that Steve Smith would be looking first for number one, Anthony Carter. You would also assume that Anthony Carter will be seeing double coverage. No question. Carter is sent wide to the left and Bean wide to the right. Third down and four. He looks for it, Carter, under pressure, then throws off the hands of Dunaway, with Carter slipping in behind and a marker down. And Garcia Lee. In on the play. Disregard the flag because the ball was tipped. The interference is there. That's why the flag was thrown, but the ball was off the hands of Dunaway prior to it getting into Carter's area. So the interference is nullified. No penalty. Fourth down and four from the 44. A minute 59 to go in the game. Fourth down. Smith for Dunaway overthrows him. Ohio State to get it back. So the Buckeyes with possession. Michigan will have to use its timeouts on defense with a minute 54 to go in the game. Buckeyes by five. Earl Bruce and the Ohio State Buckeyes with a 14 to 9 lead. A minute 54 remaining in the game. And the Buckeyes with a first and ten at the Michigan 44-yard line. And what the Wolverines will have to do is call timeout now defensively. Hold the Buckeyes. Try to get it back. Arch Leister. At quarterback. Stay in bounds. Down he goes at the 42 yard line. That timeout is called by the Wolverines. Timeout is called by the Wolverines. He also wants to eliminate excessive ball handling, so that time he kept the ball himself. Crowd today at Michigan Stadium 106,043. Second largest crowd. In Michigan, Michigan history, the Wolverines this year averaging 105,498. We noted at the very top of the show the advantage of having a senior quarterback who has started every game since coming to Ohio State, that being Arch Schleister. Michigan, of course, going with a sophomore. Schleister has had better days, yep. but he's had it when he's needed it today. Let him on that drive in the second period, 82 yards in for the touchdown, and then just a superb play with some help from Broadnax on a nice block, but it was Schleister who went into the end zone on a third and goal to make it 14 to nine. Our Chevy MVPs, Marcus Merrick, the linebacker for Ohio State, been all over the field today. 16 tackles for Merrick. Hmm. Anthony Carter, who's made four catches today, and run back kicks, the MVP for Michigan. He has 127 yards in kickoff returns alone. He's added 37 more in punt returns. And in each man's name, a $1,000 scholarship from Chevrolet to the general scholarship funds at Michigan and Ohio State. It's second down and eight from the 43-yard line. As Spencer gets inside the 40, Barrel 
wrestles his way down to the 37-yard line, and the Wolverines immediately call timeout again, so they'll have one remaining with 137 left. Bo Schembechler. The ups and downs over the years. Confrontations year after year against Woody Hayes and now Earl Bruce. Upcoming will be a third down and three with a minute 37 to go, and the Buckeyes on top, 14 to nine. Earl Bruce, O. Schembechler, with a minute 37 remaining in the game. Third down and three, Ohio State at the Michigan 37-yard line. If the Buckeyes can pick up the first down here, it'll be history. Michigan with one timeout left. Spencer plowing forward, stopped shy of the first down at the 35-yard line by Gergash. And they will spot it at the 35-yard line. Fourth down upcoming, and Michigan utilizing its final timeout, taking it with 123 remaining in the game. Tim Spencer over the 100 mark today. He has had a very quietly effective afternoon. Been a big man for the Buckeyes. He's been that way all season. He had over 1,000 yards coming into today's game. So it's as simple as this now for Ohio State, a first down. And it's all over. If Michigan can hold, they will get the ball back, but they are out of timeouts. The then they will right now is 123. They'll have to go entirely with a no huddle offense. And the way they'll be stopping the clock is by throwing some incomplete passes. I want to thank our statistician, George Hill. Our spotter doing a great job as always, Kelly J. Hayes. Coming up, of course, the second half of the doubleheader, SC against UCLA, with reports from Seattle on the Washington-Washington State game. And, of course, we'll keep you abreast as to the outcome in Iowa City, where the Hawkeyes lead Michigan State 16 to nothing. If things continue as they are going right now, if Ohio State wins and if Iowa wins, it will be Iowa going to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 23 years. Fourth and inches. Spencer looks for the first down and has it. So Michigan out of timeouts and Ohio State keeping possession. And Mr. Earl Bruce just moments away from his second victory in three years over Bo Schembechler. First down Buckeyes and the clock running with 115 remaining. On fourth and one, Spencer picks up the valuable first down yardage as the excitement builds along the Ohio State sideline. All Schleister has to do is fall down with it. And he'll have to do that one more time. And this one will go into the Bucks. So last year, as you look at the Michigan bench, Steve Smith summing it up. Just a sophomore. Sputtered at the beginning of the year, came on strong over the last four games. But today, running into a most formidable foe, and it was Arch Leister who had it when he needed it. And that will be the final play of the game. Buckeyes do not have to run off another one. Mr. Schleister and his mates have a victory over Michigan and at least a share of the Big Ten Championship. So if Iowa wins, it'll be the Hawkeyes going to the Rose Bowl. But Art Schleister will be remembered as a winner. Earl Bruce gets the ride off the field as the Ohio State Buckeyes beat the Michigan Wolverines, the final score, 14 to 9. We'll be back in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This isn't Columbus, Ohio, but there are enough Buckeye partisans here today to give Arch Schleister a ride off the field at Michigan Stadium. Arch Schleister.
Mostert scoring two touchdowns and leading the Buckeyes to a 14-9 victory over the Wolverines. And here's the winning touchdown coming in the fourth quarter with just 2.50 left in the game. What an effort by Schleister. It was a play-action pass, and he was rolling to his right looking for his tight end. Now the improvision. He starts inside. That draws the Wolves. He makes the move back to the outside. The block by Brodnick springs him. Into the end zone he goes. A better look. Watch the timing as he reaches the perimeter. Right here, he makes a fake to the inside. See this? Right there. Now that draws everybody. It sets up the block, and he moves back to the outside into the end zone for the touchdown. That capped an 80-yard drive set up on the very big interception by Kelvin Bell in the end zone. Final score, Ohio. to you by the General Motors Corporation and its Pontiac and General Motors Parts Division. By the General Tire and Rubber Company. And by Budweiser. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Uh, this week, a sad story, and it's a difficult show to do, believe me. Not for me, but for Bo Schembechler. Ohio State 14, Michigan 9, the Rose Bowl, and a lot of good things, really down the tubes. Well, that's, uh, you know, the way it is when um, you get to uh, go into this last game with everything hanging in the balance, and sometimes you win it and sometimes you don't. This game um, was frustrating in that uh, it's hard to figure something to get mad at. Um, I think that... Um, the story of the loss is one of uh, missed opportunity. We had many, many opportunities to win the game and and uh, should have, and we didn't do it. So if you didn't do it, then you don't deserve to win. When you say you don't have something to get mad at, you know what do you, what do you mean in a situation? Well, like I this? think our my, I think our team played hard, and um, I think that we played uh, in spots pretty well. Uh, I don't think that uh, officiating or anything else had anything to do with it. <laughs> Uh, it's just one of those games in which um, uh, we got down there on numerous occasions and didn't cash in, and you just can't uh, win doing that. Okay, we'll be right back in just a minute, and we'll take a look at the highlights, the game story, and pictures right after this. Michigan's loss to Ohio State this season was kind of a strange game because most people I talked to after the game coach talked about Michigan really being the dominant team of the two and yet you know on the scoreboard where it counts the most it didn't happen well we weren't dominant when we got down in there with opportunities to score uh, Jim and uh, although Ohio State only threatened twice um, they were both 80 yard drives in which they cashed in and that's the difference in the ball game we had numerous opportunities to put the game away and never did what I mean by dominant for instance, opening the game, you got a big kickoff return from Anthony The Carter. returns uh, helped us a lot. Anthony did a great job early getting us uh, field position. Um, here he takes the opening kickoff and almost breaks it all the way. Uh, gets us out to midfield with an opportunity to get to be in four down territory uh, real quick. And in a game like this, you know it's going to be close. Field position is very important and you open up with it. Well, that's true, and uh, we, we got into a few third and nine situations, and uh, Steve here gets us out and uh, first down, and uh, um, we moved down in here, and I thought we would uh, take the ball in to score, but uh, one of those things, we just uh, couldn't get it done. Here's a pass, he hits uh, Bean, our split end, uh, down the left sideline. We had an interference call there, but uh, of course it wasn't necessary because we had the first down with the completion. Here's where we got jazzed up a little bit. The ball shouldn't have been thrown out in this area, uh, and it was, and intercepted, and 
and uh, that thwarted that drive. Uh, to me, that was a mistake. We shouldn't uh, we shouldn't have thrown um, that pass at that time into that coverage. Uh, here, again. Anthony, once again uh, on the ensuing uh, punt after we have held him, uh, takes the ball down and gets his field position again. And uh, it it appeared to me that we had control of the game at this time. I know we dominated the first period pretty well. Here he throws over the middle to Anthony for a first down. And, and really, everything seemed to be working early. Well, it, it, it worked, uh, you know, pretty well. I mean, uh, we moved the football and we hit the passes, but once we got down in there, Jim, we just didn't execute, and, and uh, consequently, we always came up short. Is there a reason for that or anything? Well, the reason for it is, uh, you know, mistakes and uh, uh, things like that that eventually get you stopped. Uh, uh, you know, and, and give credit to Ohio State. They played good defense inside the 20, and uh, that's the, the whole story. Here's a third and two. Steve gets a first down for us. Uh, we led 3 nothing at this time and uh, pretty much uh, had the game in control, but uh, it wasn't long before things didn't go our way anymore. When, when, you're, <laughs> when you're on the sideline and you're watching this, can you feel this kind of thing happening? Or you know, I always felt uh, we were never in control of the game. Uh, here we come back to pass again. We throw a little late down the middle, and uh, the ball gets tipped and intercepted by the Ohio State linebacker, and uh, that's uh, two interceptions down there that hurt us. Uh, no question about it, but... Uh, you know, that's one of those things. Um, I never felt uh, like we wouldn't win it, but I never felt that we really had control of the game either. Uh, this is the first uh, pass that they hit on us, uh, curl to uh, Anderson, their uh, split end. And uh, they uh, start to move on this drive and get an off-tackle play with Spencer in here out to midfield and uh, begin to get their one drive in the first half that really hurt us. Still, you didn't feel your defense played that poorly. No, I didn't. I didn't think they played badly at all. Uh, we made a few bad plays and gave them a few plays, but taking everything into consideration, uh, yardage-wise, scoring-wise, I felt we would score more than nine points. I felt we'd score a lot more than 14, to be honest with you, but uh, it's one of those things. Here they hit the tight end over the middle. He caught seven passes in the game, none of them for any uh, long yardage, but uh, you know enough to keep you off balance in there. And then finally, they sneak for the touchdown here and go ahead seven to three uh, at halftime. Now you're down seven to three, but again, they've only had one drive. Uh, you feel, at least, it looked to most everybody that was there that again you dominated. You ran the ball well, and right. you came back after they scored and started moving. Right. This is Larry Ricks uh, running an off tackle play and bringing for a first down. Um, this is Steve uh, on the draw, uh, picks up another first down and we cross midfield. Um, I never felt that we couldn't move the ball on them. Uh, it's just that it was frustrating that we got down in there so often and, you know, didn't get the uh, touchdown. Here he hits uh, Craig Dunaway again, and we come up just short of a first down here, uh, Jim. And on the next play, uh, we do a bad job here. We don't block the backside linebacker and fail to get the first down. Those are those little mistakes you're talking about. That's exactly right. Uh, you're, you're in position where you almost get the block and you don't quite get it, and that ends up being the guy that stops the play. So we end up a little bit short at halftime. We're down 7-3, to three, but even at halftime in there, I felt confident that we'd move the ball and score more. At halftime, you go into the locker room. What were your thoughts on adjustments or things you had to do, or did you feel, hey, we got a good game plan going, it's just the turnovers that hurt us? Right. What we had to do was uh, basically uh, continue to run because we could effectively run. Uh, at times they were taking the pass away from Anthony, but leaving it open on the, on the other side to Vince Bean and the tight end crossing. And uh, we hit that pass in the second half, uh, but we, didn't, we missed it uh, you know, a couple of times as well. And, uh, and the long and short of it is that it wasn't a matter that we didn't have things that we could go after them with and move with. We just didn't execute when we got down in there. And, uh, and that's what beat us. We will be right back with a look at the second half, the half that it was all decided in right after this. Opening up the second half, Michigan trailed Ohio State 7-3, to but 
In watching the opening of the second half, I also noticed and it felt that Michigan came out aroused like, hey, we really gave it to them. We, we should be leading, you know, 17-3 or 17-7. I felt like in the second half, the team was going to just really put it together and go, and it looked like that from the beginning. Well, we, um, you know, we moved right away in the second half and, and uh, gained control of the game really in the third period. But once again, we were putting uh, field goals on the board and not touchdown. Was that the attitude of the kids, though, coming out? I mean, we can do this? And oh, yeah, sure. I mean, we felt we could win, and, and uh, you know, we, we came out and uh, gained control of the game. We ran pretty well and hit a pass or two and, and uh, moved right down there. Uh, that was Butch running off tackle for a nice game. Steve comes back and hits Anthony on the out cut. And, uh, you know, we're starting to move the ball like we're capable. Uh, Stanley hits a trap uh, up the middle here, and uh, we're down in there close, really threatening. But uh, once again, once we get down in there, you know, you gotta. You, this is a third and three play, and, and uh, really, we miss an adjustment on a on a uh, back uh, filling inside the end, and we get stopped and have to kick the field goal, and now it's uh, seven six. Um, you know. Uh, you, you, try to think, you know, whether you ought to be going for those field goals or not, but, uh, you know, I don't think I'd second-guess myself on that. I think we, uh, that's what we had to do because we came right back here and got a turnover uh, after we kicked the field goal. Uh, Tony Jackson uh, intercepted a pass in which uh, Bostic made a great play and tipped the ball, and uh, we've got the ball in field position again. Yeah, you've been known to go on those fourth downs close. Well, yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, I like to do that. I like to <laughs> keep control of the ball. And that didn't happen yeah. in this game. And I think yeah. part of the reason was one was to get you close, and the other one really you couldn't give up the chance to, to take the lead. Right. Uh, Steve Smith on the previous play ran uh, the option for a first down, and then we came back with an off-tackle play. And uh, they had a face mask penalty that got us an additional 15 yards. So we get down in there, and we get stopped again, Jim, and have to go to the field goal, and, and we take the lead here 9-7. to seven. Um, so far, um, even though we're not scoring the touchdowns, uh, we are, you know, gaining control of the game. Here they hit a pass over the middle uh, that uh, Frank, their tight end, made a nice play on. And uh, they crossed midfield with that play. But um, she's a 9-7 game right now, and here we are in the fourth period, and they're threatening. Uh, Sleister goes up over the top, and... Um, and uh, Brian Carpenter intercepts for us and takes us out of trouble here, and uh, we're in good shape. At this point, i got to believe you're thinking, hey, offensively, we keep it on the ground. We put a good drive together. We, You know, we got this one. Well, we just wanted to get some field position here. We ran off tackle. Butch ran extremely hard. And uh, really, I, you know, he fumbled the ball. I'm not even so sure he wasn't down. But <laughs> anyway, uh, he, he was running as hard as he could run. And we, he fumbled the ball. He's not fumbled much this year. He's had a lot of carries. And, and uh, so that gave them a field goal opportunity that they missed. So right now we have the ball at the 20-yard uh, uh, line or so, and, and uh, we come right back to move again, lead 9-7, to seven, and uh, Smith hits uh, Anthony over the middle here. Um, and we're on a drive that could very well have uh, clinched the game for us. Uh, third and six, uh, Steve comes out again, hits Anthony over the middle for the first down. And, uh, you know, we're moving. Came up another third and eight, and uh, Steve did a great job here. He hit Vince Bean right on the sideline at the eight-yard line. We have first down on the eight. We had a play we thought uh, would be good. Uh, uh, we just overthrew the ball a little bit to Anthony, and, and on the second down play, we, uh, we missed a pass over the middle, and here on third down, uh, they tipped the ball and intercept, and uh, that took us out of that drive, and that hurt. Uh, this is a third and long situation, and uh, that's, that's one I... <laughs> that one really hurt yeah, because you yeah. had him sacked, and well, he just comes up with the big play. He threw that ball back. You know, that's a Hail Mary pass <laughs> that uh, was caught. And uh, so they start to move here now and, and get down in here, and we're in a bad defense here, and he broke outside on a fill game and, and uh, got a big play down in there. And then... On a third down uh, situation, um, sees to back to pass, and and on third and goal here, and uh, we didn't know whether he's going to pass or run, and we're all standing around, nobody going after him, and he gets in for the touchdown. And that was the touchdown that 
won it for Ohio State 14 and 9 and if you don't mind uh, let me do a little quarterbacking here uh, some people questioned or asked Saturday after the game about the three passes the third one that was intercepted mm -hmm. uh, to Dunaway when you got first and goal at the eight what was the thinking behind that? Well, we said uh, at halftime that the first time that we got inside the 10, that we go to Anthony on first down, and uh, we missed that pass. We came back on the second down, and, uh, and I thought we had Dunaway open. I'm not uh, absolutely sure that we should have got that one in there, but we thought we had him open, and we didn't, we didn't get that one. So by that time, we had on third down, we had to go for the uh, pass again with eight yards to go. Um, Sure, that's easy to second guess. Uh, if I had to do over again, I don't think I'd have changed on that. Um, and uh, I, 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 wanna, I want you to understand this too, Jim. When you, when you go into a game, there are a lot of plays. The plays that work, you can always say, you know, that's a, that was a good play. I'm glad we called that. And the ones that don't work, you say, well, I wish we'd have done something else. That's easy to do. But when you've been in coaching a long time, you know, that hindsight's always 20-20. In this game, uh, we just failed with numerous opportunities down in there to score. It was not one player's fault. I don't think it was the coach's fault. I just think it's one of those things where we didn't capitalize when we had the opportunities. And that's one of those things. And, you know, from, from the standpoint, and, and I want this understood too, that uh, in a big game like this when you lose, uh, there are only two people that can lose it. One is the head coach and the other is the quarterback. In this case, it's got to be the head coach because I don't want to hear anything said about my quarterback because he's had a great year for us as a sophomore and uh, I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with a special feature on Michigan Replay that we have every year. The Senior Salute. Stay with us. <laughs> Each year we say goodbye to a great uh, group of guys who have completed their eligibility in playing for Michigan. And this group has been an outstanding group. Uh, there are many of them that, uh, here's Kurt Becker, for example, an offensive guard who came back a fifth year, uh, made All-American, uh, co-captain of our offensive team, had a great year for us. And uh, Kurt missed a year as a freshman and had an opportunity, came back and and uh, did a great job for us. Fred Brockington from Detroit, Michigan, a wide receiver who transferred here from UCLA and has done a great job for our team. Brian Carpenter, a defensive back from Flint, Michigan. Uh, Brian is uh, the second Carpenter that's played for us. His brother Butch was a great player for us. And Brian, uh, two years started for us and has been outstanding. Mark Sarnata, who came here without the benefit of a grant made and played four years of football for us. B.J. Dickey, who did a great job for us this year as our backup quarterback and, and just been uh, outstanding. Stanley Edwards, uh, another fifth-year player who's completed his eligibility at fullback and made a, a position shift because we needed a fullback and didn't run the ball as much as maybe he'd like, but was a great football player for us. Brad Fisher, who's our demonstration quarterback and did a great job for us. Stu Harris, who came back a fifth year, is, this youngster has been an outstanding football player except for injuries that handicapped his play. Tony Jackson, who I think is the best free safety in the conference today, uh, had a great year for us and a lot of interceptions. And uh, Tony came to us as a tailback and switched to safety and uh, did a great job for us. Tom Neal, an offensive tackle from Orlando, Florida, a fine student and did a great job for us uh, uh, all four years. Ben Needham starting outside linebacker and um, outstanding player, a great defender against the pass, as shown here with an interception against uh, Illinois. Uh, ben had a great uh, senior year for us. Tony Osborne, he came back a fifth year because he wanted to be a starter and, and started a defensive tackle and did a great job for us. Here's a play in the Navy game where he stopped an option play on third down. And, uh, Tony uh, had a great year. Bubba Paris, a four-year letterman. Three years as a starter at offensive tackle. Big and strong and powerful and uh, he's had a great uh, career at Michigan. And, uh, I'm sure he has uh, have opportunities to play professionally if he'd like. Uh, Vince Shaw, who 
uh, as a tight end, was a youngster who came out on his own and helped a lot. Kevin Smith, a defensive back from Dallas, Texas. Uh, some of these youngsters didn't play a lot, but they made great contributions. Carl Tech, an outstanding young man who walked on and played on our special teams and used as a kicker. Uh, Sanford Washington, a linebacker out of uh, Youngstown, Ohio. He did a great job on the demonstration team. And Butch Wolfer, who was the greatest ground gainer in the, in the history of Michigan football. Uh, all of these youngsters uh, made a great contribution. And uh, Jim, I want you to know that uh, there are many other uh, uh, players on our team who uh, still have a year of eligibility remaining who may or may not. Uh, be back to play again, but uh, hopefully uh, some of them will. You can get to honor those seniors, uh, uh, the players who have completed their eligibility at the Michigan Football Bust. It'll be held Monday, November 30th at the Weston Hotel, the Renaissance Center. And for those of you interested in ticket information, uh, call up Tom Stevens. He has all the information for you on tickets at 879-6023 or 338 nine six seven seven both of those numbers are area code three one threes that ends a uh, a season uh, and yet you know we talk about the senior salute and you've still got one game left to play and according to the wire services we're not real sure yet but according to the wire services it's ucla versus michigan in the blue bonnet bowl right jim uh, you know we have to make these uh, arrangements you know much prior to the final game and and we were set to go to the Blue Bonnet if something like this happened. Uh, had we won, Ohio State had gone to the Blue Bonnet. And, um, but the thing that happened, um, uh, I'm surprised that UCLA is opponent. I'm glad they are because they're an outstanding team and great national prestige. But uh, I didn't know that the conference uh, was allowed to play a Pac-10 conference opponent in a bowl other than the Rose Bowl. I think there had been a rule of that. Apparently, the rule had been change so that uh, we could play UCLA in the Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston. Well, that's it for this week. We thank you all for joining us this season, but that's not the end of the Michigan replay season. We've got one show left with a lot of different highlights of the season long. We've got a bowl uh, preview and, of course, our special Michigan replay features. Thank you for joining us tonight and join us next week. So long. Michigan replay has been brought to you by... The General Motors Corporation and its Pontiac and General Motors Parts Division by the General Tire and Rubber Company and by Budweiser. <laughs>